Well, this is where the real Demon Souls begins, I suppose. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and we are going to skip the intro cutscene, and we are going to basically just pop straight into the game. No reason not to at this point. I imagine that a lot of people who have been paying attention to the PlayStation 4 and the run-up to its release know what this game is already. So, I feel like me going into the nuts and bolts of it is not particularly effective for what this game really accomplishes. In terms of just being demon souls, as in being the progenitor of this sort of subgenre of action RPGs, but what in the remake does as well. And showing them all off at the same time is going to be a bit annoying just by... Not coming at it with any kind of idea, but purely on a script. So what we're going to do this time is, instead of just like me planning out a route and going through it and looking like a genius, we're just going to play. But there are a couple of things that we're going to need to do first before we go and really start adventuring into the unknown. So we're here at the hub right now, and there are characters we can talk to. Like the blacksmith, who can upgrade our weapons with certain amounts of resources, fix our stuff. Give us some basic resources. We've got other people as well. We have Stockpile Thomas, who's holding onto our stuff for us. Because we can't hold on to everything that we possibly want to. Because we have an item burden. Which can get quite annoying. But thankfully isn't actually that big of a deal, considering that we can just... Put a bunch of our crap away and not worry too much about that at all. You can see all the items I've already got stored over there. These all do different things, but we'll get to them. You've also got characters who come and go as the story progresses. Like there used to be a guy sitting here on the first archstone step, but he's gone now. And these NPCs tend to have their own individual stories going on in the background of the game as you are progressing. And this can even apply to people you find and rescue out of places. Disciple of God, huh? So I can actually learn miracles. We'll get to them. Hi. I have sinned. I swore allegiance to Saint Elaine, who was of no use to him. And now. I have run, run away, away, and the boundary is his consciousness. I'm sorry to hear that. I usually don't end up paying attention to these stories because they tend to have this... They have this tendency to need to be done as you're going through the game. Every, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that, I just kind of rolled... So here we can come and learn magic if we want to, which has been part of my strategy so far. But outside of that, I don't really think I have much going on here. I could head upstairs and go talk to one of the guys who put me on this quest, or I could go up, 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 upstairs and see like the online leaderboards I've got for everything from strongest game completion to fastest game completion to... A bunch of other things along those lines, including your own dudes, including your own records. But we're not going to do that. We can also talk to Thus Maiden here. And this is where we go to level up. And here we have our individual stats, which affect things on the right there. And they're all pretty, pretty self-explanatory if you look down the bottom there. The ones you really need to worry about... Like, Vitality and Endurance are just basically your HP and your Stamina. Intelligence determines how many spells you can hold on you. Strength and Dexterity are two different kinds of weapon strengths, so you want to probably want to focus on one and not the other. I focused on Strength, but some people like focusing on Dexterity. Because there are different weapons with different usability to them, depending on what your style is. And you've also got Magic and Faith, which both require some kind of object in one hand or another. For example, you need, I think it's a called a Catalyst for Magic and a Talisman for Faith. 
And they're two different sets of magic with two different sets of skills. And despite the fact that they're both on the same magic bar, that's basically all they have in common. And of course you got luck, which no, well, nobody increases unless they're aiming to do something absolutely ridiculous. So that's the basics. You've got your stats down there that you need to level up. You've got your item storage there. Your weapon upgrades to a point there. You get you get a better blacksmith as you go on, don't worry. But you do need to put some effort to finding him. And other characters around that you can follow their stories if you manage to like find them out in the world or so on. But the real star of the show is these five arch stones hanging out here. And this reminds me of a Mega Man game more than anything else. Where you pick one of these and it gives you the option to teleport to an area, which you then need to progress through linearly. So, you start at the gates of Boletaria, for example, then when you beat the boss there, it takes you to the Lord's Path. And then once you've done that, you go to the Inner Ward after you beat another boss. So, you need to go through these areas linearly, but the difference is you can pick between any one of them when you start. So, it's a nice benefit being able to just pick where you like. So, if I get stuck on this Archstone, for example, I can head up to this one and give this one a try, just so... I can try and get some power going behind me, and I don't have to worry too much about needing to, needing to be too prepared for something in my way. With that said, we're going to go to the uh, Archstone of the Covetous King, because I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't tell you my strategy for grinding out resources. Because if I just pause the game and have a look at my inventory for a minute, you can see that we've got different kinds of healing grasses. If you've played Souls before, but you've never played Demons, you might wonder what the hell this is about and where your flask is, because they don't give you an Estus flask in this game. They give you these grasses, which are consumables, and they're limited. You can't get them by respawning. So you have to go and grind them, which can be kind of annoying to deal with. On the PS3, it was a lot harder because you had to spend a way larger amount of time than you normally would doing this. And I would find myself... I'm just going to turn my volume down. I forgot to turn my speakers down. There we go. Yeah, you just hit me. I'll just hit you back. You, you would have to spend a couple of minutes loading into... Boletaria here every time because this is the best place to grind out healing items. I currently have a ring on. You've got plenty of different kinds of items. Armor and weapons are self-explanatory. Rings give you like special effects. Bastard. Rings give you special effects. My ring of magical sharpness makes my spells more powerful and my providential ring makes it so that I'm more likely to get items off dead bodies. So it's great for farming healing grasses or other assorted items. Thankfully, I also have a different weapon. You can hold two weapons at any time. You also have a backstab attack. If you get behind the enemy and tap the R1 button. Depends on the enemy type, of course, but if you do that, yay! You get to backstab him. Does major damage. So you have two different kinds of attack. You've got light and you've got heavy. If I'm not rudely interrupted, there's the heavy. Heavy attacks usually take longer to charge up, but they definitely do more damage. You can also press the triangle button to two-hand a weapon, which will do even more damage. There are weapons, like for example my claymore here. Is, is this a claymore? I can't remember what it's called, but you get the general concept. This claymore here, under normal circumstances, like say if my strength is below 20, I'm usually not able to weld this weapon, wield this weapon effectively. Weld, stick it to another weapon and become Darth Maul. No, I'm not able to effectively wield this weapon. So I need to increase my stats in order to wield it. But for some weapons, if your strength or your dexterity is high enough, but just not high enough, you can dual wield it by pressing the triangle button and you'll be able to use it effectively. If you try to use a weapon ineffectively, you'll do basically no damage with it and you'll probably be incredibly slow. If you've got a shield in your left hand, you can use it to block, and we full, we wholeheartedly recommend over here at the Multiple Personality Disorder School, because I just said we. I fully recommend having a shield on you at all times, especially if you're a first-time player, because having a shield on means that you can block most incoming damage, of course, if there are spells or whatever. It might not do so well against them. Shields are individually effective against different kinds of damage. But you do, of course, have that one little thing that demons and all of its souls, brethren after it, are more famous for. 
And that's the ability to dodge. And of course, it all depends on the weight of the equipment you're carrying. So, if I hit the start button, you can see that I've got le leather boots, leather armor, and leather gloves. And that's keeping my armor encumbrance up in the top right there, the equip burden, I should say, at 43.8%, which is very low. I could carry a lot more with me, but the more you carry with you, the slower that you move, the slower that your stamina, which is the green bar at the top left, regenerates. And the slower that you dodge roll. So trust me, the faster that you're able to dodge roll, the better. Because there is a difference between taking attack to the face and living. But there's a difference between taking that attack to the face, for example, and completely avoiding it. There are some shields that will let you just tank all of the damage from a physical attack. Wow, okay, I wasn't expecting to get that. There are some shields, of course, that will let you tank all the damage from a physical attack. But just being able to not only dodge out of the way, but quickly turn around and immediately swing and get another hit on people. That is infinitely more valuable, in my personal opinion. So, keeping your equip, wa equip weight as low as humanly possible is very valuable. Because it just means you're more... Just means you're more maneuverable. Now you could, you absolutely could, tank the fuck up, wear really heavy armor, and just take every blow to the face with a gigantic shield and just shrug it off and use healing items, but that's not gonna do you good forever. Now you might wonder why I bothered coming through here like this. Well, there is a reason for that. The reason is that I got a bunch of grasses from those dudes. I got from the blue-eyed knight. I got some. Uh, I got some. What? What was it? Some light moon grass. Yes, yeah, some light moon grass. And then from the big guy with the with the red eyes, who is a lot more difficult to beat, does a lot more damage to you in the grand scheme of things. I got from him a new moon grass, but he usually hands out three full moon grasses, which is actually worth more, so I don't know why they made that a rarer drop. So by doing that rare repeatedly, you can farm yourself some healing grasses. I fully recommend that you do this on the regular, because if you are out of grasses and you die, it is a massive pain, because if you've never played demons before, here's the big deal. Not only are the souls that you collect around the world as consumables and by defeating enemies that immediately go into your total in the top right there. Not only do you lose all of them when you die, but they are dropped on the floor where you died or in a safe position. So if you die from falling to your death, it'll be like on the ledge where you did an idiotic thing and jumped right off, right? That's not great. That's really not great. But, it does mean that you are encouraged not to die as much as possible. There is also a secondary deficit. See how my health bar is full right now? If I die at any time, I will lose my humanity, which means I will lose half my health bar. Because this game did that. And it was freaking insane that it did that. But it does that. So you want to be keeping alive, yourself alive as much as humanly possible, not only for your wallet and for your leveling up, but for the fact that you lose half your health bar when you die. There are ways around this, like one of the first rings you find in the game is a cling ring, which will increase the amount of health you get when you are in that state. But there are also items you get that can bring you back to full-blown human, which will give you your health bar back. But they are consumables and they are limited, you can't buy them. So as you can see by what I'm doing right now, is I'm actually doing a farming run, because it's really simple, thanks to the fact that the PlayStation 5's load times are extremely fast, to go back and forth between these two points. So every, like, couple of hours in the game, and I'm currently on hour, like, 11, as you can see there. So every two hours or so, I find myself needing to come and repeat this grind a few times. Thankfully, it doesn't usually last longer than a few minutes at a time. But it's still pretty frustrating, and the reason why I started out this video 
with that is because you will need to do that from time to time and if you don't you will be in a much worse state for it because you need those healing items and thankfully once you've got all those souls while it's not particularly useful you can come back to the blacksmith use those souls to repair your equipment you just need like a crappy weapon to get through all those dudes even if you leveled up and you can also come here and buy some grasses and some things that'll help you restore your magic points if you're a spell build. So you're not helpless if you're completely out of healing items. It's just a bit of a grind away to get yourself to a reasonable level. It's not great. And it really does make you miss the Estus Flasks. And if it wasn't for the fact that the PlayStation 5 can load these levels in like two seconds. I probably would have fallen off this game already. But thankfully this time around... It's not anywhere near as big of a problem. So our next step is to decide what Archstone we're going to go into. There's five here. This sixth one here is a big point of contention in the community. Because everyone's like, oh, why didn't they remaster this Archstone? Because it was never finished. They remaster is not... They're not remaster is not development finishes. But yes, we have like four Arch Archstones to pick from. We can't go through this one because it's blocked off until we've beaten what they call an Archdemon. But we can go through any of the other unlocked ones to go to an area that I've never been before. So we're just going to pick one. As for which one, I have no freaking clue. I think we're going to go for this one, actually. Archstone of the Tower Queen. This level is known as 3-2. Being able to go through these levels in any order you want encourages plenty of exploration. But for now, let's go. And by the way, this message... I'm in trouble. Please recommend this message. It's not this message. It's this message. It's not this message either. Shit. There's a message around here somewhere that says, This is where the true demon soul begins. So if that doesn't give you an idea of how screwed I am, well, let's find out. So it's said to be careful of black phantoms ahead. Black phantoms are what this game calls red spirit dudes that appear out of nowhere and beat the crap out of you. So where are they? Because usually they're right here. But yes, the entire point of this game is basically explore around these massive desolate worlds, collect the items, beat the enemies, make yourself stronger. Because there is a plot to this game and it can be kind of hard to make out. Yeah in a lot of different ways. Because a lot of the game's lore is actually hidden behind different things like, say, item descriptions. Or, oh my god, what is that thing? That is a gargoyle. I'm gonna pepper him in the face with fire. That's not working very well. I need to prepare to fight. Can I backstab it from here? Yes! Alright. New enemy. You handle new enemies the way you handle every enemy in this game. With extreme caution. Because not only am I on a really thin platform, I do not know what this enemy can do. Thankfully, I am relatively strong, so I was able to beat him, but... You know what they say, when there's one, there's more. Even the, just the slight wrong attack could send me flying off the edge at this point. Because look at this place. It's freaking huge. It's also absolutely gorgeous. Because one of the things that really attracts people to the world of the Souls games is their environmental designs. From Software nailed it in 07. No, not 07. It was like 05 or something. It was like the launch date of the PlayStation. Because the original Demon Souls was a PlayStation 3 launch title. But yeah, FromSoft nailed it with this feeling of a dying kingdom going on. And now Bluepoint with their remaster has made it look unbelievably gorgeous. I am playing in what the game calls this performance mode, where it plays at a dynamic 4K resolution, which means it drops down below 4K if the game's frame rate happens to take a dip below that point as well. So, it makes you it makes you pick between that or a solid 4K, but considering that I'm playing this on a 1080p, C, uh, a 20, 1080p screen, holy shit me, speak properly. 
It means that I haven't even seen the resolution so much as flinch. It also means that the entire game has been incredibly smooth. Everything looks gorgeous. The absolute majority of the assets made it over to this new version basically um, unchanged in most ways. And it's just an incredible environment to stroll through. Because it looks amazing. There's tons of details all over the place. There's items hidden everywhere. And it can be really difficult to find all of them. Sometimes they're really simple, like this. Just backing off to the side here. But sometimes they are incredibly difficult to find. Being hidden behind like three doors, an illusory wall, and a bunch of other bullshit along the way. What you doing? Come on. Good night. Oh, don't drop off the edge before I can get that. Oh, thank God. So the game 100% encourages exploration via items. Via hidden bits of lore. Via bastards holding a fucking crossbow. And he can fly. How is this fair? I had a feeling he'd be able to shoot that from the sky. Thankfully, I have a gigantic sword. Well, buy that item. You know what, let's put on a ring, huh? Let's put on a slowly restore HP over time ring. Just to demonstrate how different things can work. So it encourages exploration by having these absolutely massive open levels. Which are very easy to get lost in. And having items hidden all over the place. Everything from items you need to upgrade your weapons. To things that just give you souls. Two things that will actually be useful in combat, such as new weapons. And all of these different weapons handle very differently. Like, for example, that was my Claymore. It's a very useful weapon. It's currently my main. I'm hoping to get my hands on something that's a little bit more... Is that a monster? That's a monster, isn't it? I do not like the look of this one bit. Let's just back off and demonstrate these items first, because you never know what's going to happen. But... So this is my Claymore. Pretty simple. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Good good sweep and good overhead attack with some just hot, too high ranged enemies. And you've also got one handed weapons that you can use like this. They are a lot faster but they deal less damage. And you've also got things like daggers. And of course you've also got things like magic. I am using a very simple magic spell. It doesn't take much MP. But it also does continuous damage. What on earth is this thing? I guess I can't get through here. Alright, moving on. So as a result of having all of these different kinds of weapons and items and what have you just scattered around the place, it means that the game's got a lot of different styles, especially since you can only really build your characters to be successful with one, maybe two different kinds of weapons, whether they be strength or dex, whether they be uh, faith or... Uh, brain work with me here. Whether they be faith or whether they be just general magic. This also encourages replayability. Because a character that's focused entirely on magic is going to play entirely differently to a character... Beware of false messages. Yeah, that's a thing. We'll get to that. A character who... Oh. Right, he's big. Yeah, a character that focuses on one doesn't have the stat points to really focus on another. So you really, really, really need to just focus on one. Ooh. 
Oh shit. I did not see him there. Right, you know what? Screw this. Let's fight on better ground than- Oh my god, there's a third one. At least there's a fog gate. Shit. Heal up while I've got the chance. Leaves you vulnerable though, so you need to take the time to do it, and you need to be very gentle. As in doing it at the exact wrong time, cannon will get you killed. Thankfully, there's usually some hard cover around. Don't you back the fuck off, you come back here. Eat shit. Time to. I can hit him in the air. That's why I like this Claymore so much. It's because it, it has such a high speed. Is this a Claymore? Yes, it's a Claymore. Thank you. But yeah, that's why I like this Claymore so much. You swing it, and it's got huge aerial clearance. So it's good for this shit. Go, huh? Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Flambage. What the hell is a flambage? I thought that's some kind of food. Should be safe. Uh, weapons. Flambage. What does it do? Uh, so this one requires high strength and high dexterity. Because as you can see, the E is for strength and the D is for dexterity. And depending on how high those individual stats are on your character... the higher your attack power will be with those weapons. So that basically just determines how strong you are. Yes, thank you, Brain. That was the best sentence you've ever come up with. But yes, you do need to be fo usually focused on one and not the other. Yeah, I had a feeling. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, there's three of them. I can just barely see his eyes and the flapping wings. That's never good. Let's take this one at a time. Really? <laughs> Your buddies tried that. Didn't work out too well for them. Let's see. Can I hit him? Hit one of these dudes with magic from here? Doesn't do much to them. Fire isn't very good against these dudes. The good thing about this spell is that I can walk and fire it. The default spell arrow doesn't let you do that. Thankfully, I also have a second spell. Which will make this weapon good with magic. So I'm actually pretty well stocked up to fight most things. Because there are environmental resistances and differences. Fog doors sometimes lead to bosses. And sometimes they don't. Either way, when you find one, you know you're making progress. The downside being that if, you, if you're just new to these kinds of levels and you come back through. There's a decent chance that you're not going to remember the way you went. Because... As I said, these levels are freaking maze-like sometimes, and you can get lost in them. It might just seem like a couple of tunnels and a... A couple of tunnels and a, just a couple of uh, side passages, but these levels can get huge. With tons of different directions you can go in. What the heck? Okay, sure, bye. It says beware monsters, so I am keeping my shield up. Thank you for telling me to be beware monsters. I can't... Oh, there we go. I've got the lock on and now I've lost it because he's too far away. Nope. Try it again. Thank you. Smack. One more time. Smack. Down you go. Man, that, um... That ring I put on is really doing me some favours. Bloodstain. So this game really has, like, a few unique features going for it. Here's one. Touch someone's bloodstain that they left behind when they died, and you can see how they died. This guy's was red, which means he was probably invading someone else as well, which is part of this game's really in-depth multiplayer system, where not only can you summon people to help you, but... Huh. Where not only can you summon people to help you, but you can invade other people and try and kill them for a reward. I have not been able to do this. For reasons. Mainly because I'm on the Australian servers and it seems like there's no one either invading or invadable. 
every time that I've tried. Okay, whatever that thing is in that metal tower, I think I've made it mad. If you have white soul tendency, you can proceed. That's another feature. But yes, not only can you invade people, but they can invade you. And there is one unique boss in this game where if you're online, someone else will be drawn in to serve as that boss instead of the actual regular boss. It's a really interesting system, if I'm being honest with you, because it means that not only do you have an interesting way of doing one-on-one uh, -on -one or one-on-many combat, because the maximum amount of people in one game is like six people at once, but it also lends itself to some other uses. Including, apparently, saying this guy's going for a nap. But sometimes, they can help you. Sometimes, they can hinder you. I have a bad feeling about this. Fuck am I? Oh. Something tells me I want out of this right now. Why the hell have I ended up? I've apparently ended up in the lair of a gigantic worm. Or something. There are items here. Welcome to the Sniper's Perch? Oh, Christ. Yep, I've seen this thing before. I do not remember it being that strong. I do not want to get too close to that thing. You see all those things around the outside of it? Those are weapons. Thankfully, I have plenty of spice. Which makes me think of Dune every time I hear it. I've never even seen or read Dune, so... I'm just trying to fight it off without getting too close to it. Because if I get too close, I am at the mercy of those weapons. And I have plenty of spices to survive the fight. Without needing to get that close to him. See what I mean? All of those swinging swords and things of that nature. Man, I really should have just approached and done that. That was easy. What do we got? Cool. So the entirety of the online element adds an entire, just like, extra layer of craziness to the entire game. Because you don't know whether or not the guy who's left a message for you is trying to help you or hinder you. It's entirely possible they're helping, but there's also one time when they might be like, Hey, there's no bad dude around the next corner, and then there's a bad dude around the next corner. You can just never be quite sure. Did I just get a second one of the rings I already have? I think that ring gives me MP back. I literally just traded away my telescope for a ring earlier on in the game, but... They... What the hell is that thing? Whatever it is, it looks big and it looks unhappy. And look at that. It look, there seems to be a way up to fight it. Ain't that something... I should probably find my way back up there to actually fight it. But yes, ladies and gents, this is part of the adventure. Getting lost. 
Seriously, why is this area down here so big? There's nothing here. Yes, hello. Oh, look at him move. Thankfully. Well, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to have my shield out. No one knows what you're about to beat the shit out of. And how I can decide to attack you in return. Especially when there's two of them. That's why you get your shield back out, dudes. Forty-nine souls for that creepy crawly thing? Really? Seems cheap. Ow. Ow. Thank you. Bye. We've got another one of the big things up here. Is it two of them, I should say? Plague resistance ring. That might actually come in handy, handy later. You are, you are cute. I, I appreciate the uh, vote of confidence on that, but I am no such thing. Of course, there's always the chance that I'll leave this place and I'll completely miss something. Something really important. Because you can always see like all these little things off in the distance with their own items, but no obvious way on how to get there. And there's always a decent chance they're hidden behind some weird mountain pass or some other just like tiny out of the way path that you might never see. The game does help you out with this somewhat, but it does very little in the way of tutorializing how the mechanics work, which to be fair is exactly the same way the original game handled it. So you probably don't want to go too far if you're calling this a remake, although it feels a bit weird to call this a remake and not just a flat out remaster because you would think, because the thing about the way this game does its graphics and its gameplay is that it's using the original code, warts and all, from the original gameplay experience and just polishing it up so that it works at a higher frame rate and higher resolution and it has all of these fancy new graphics applied like over the top of it, right? So you think they'd call that a, a remaster, but no, they're just calling this a flat out remake. They have added like their own weapons and things along those lines too. But yes, outside of that, whoa, Nelly, that took a, oh my God, there's three of them. Screw it. You get fireballs to the face until I'm convinced you can die with one swing of my sword. Ow. Did I just cut its tail off? Let my stomach come back. There we go. Yeah, you can cut these things' tails off. Who'd have thunk it? Shame it doesn't give you an item. Let's get some magic back. So yeah, you think they'd call it just like a remaster, but no, apparently this is a full-on remake because gaming terminology doesn't make any sense anymore. But yes, the thing that I was talking about that they actually do help you with is if you hit, and there's a good chance of going through here might lead us to a boss, so I'll hold off on that until we've um, shown this off. But, Dark Moon Grass. Ooh, that's probably going to be a ridiculous amount. Fully heals, HP, and status ailments. It's also really heavy, so you can see that if you've got too much of these grasses, It'll take up the majority of your inventory and you won't even be able to carry around any bloody weapons. So that's how they've been keeping people from just endlessly grinding away all of the healing items that they'll need and keeping them all on them at once. But anyway, if I to if I would hit the PlayStation button and go to the area that we are at right now, we can check out the helpful video hints. And these hints are actually helpful from time to time. Such as saying, hey, don't worry, this elevator will come back. And uh, these four prisoners offer their souls 
as a source of power, and that's only half the problem. Yeah, that's just something I already did. And main centipede, available in two sizes. The attack does high damage to you and your equipment, so that's what I need to be keeping my eye out for. See, sometimes those tips can be really useful. But then at other times, you're playing through and you look up a video and it's literally just a dude walking through the beginning of the area for five seconds with a little thing saying, hey, this is the new area. So it can be frustratingly obtuse sometimes as to what it actually wants to help you with and not. It does help. There were a couple of times I relied on it and it told me where I needed to go and be. But I couldn't help but laugh when it was literally just lol, walking down a corridor for five seconds. But okay. It's also really good at telling what hint videos you need to see and why. Veterans? Veterans! That guy is bad. He can eat fire. Oh my god. Oh my god times two. I need to keep running away. Because I need to heal very badly. Holy crap, that was a lot of damage. I am so lucky. Alright. Oh, he's running away. Can I get up behind him without him without him noticing I'm here? Two hand. Almost there. Backstab! See, these, these red ghostly enemies are phantoms. They can hurt you very badly. That's usually what people look like when they're invading, but sometimes a game will just drop some on you anyway. This game also has a unique way to determine whether or not a special kind of these guys is invading. More often than not. And that is the world tendency. I have no idea how this works, so I'm not going to explain it. But basically, every part of the world can be anywhere from white to black. And depending on how far black it is, things will get very, very bad. Ho, ho, ho! Oh! Oh, thank god I got the second one with the wild swing, apparently. These things are dangerous. Whoa, that was not expected. You get back here. I want you... Damn it. That was a, uh, I don't remember what they call them in, um, in Demons. Because Demons and Dark Souls don't actually share, like, the same heritage for the most part. Ooh, items. But those guys have a lot of upgrade materials, but they tend to disappear if you leave them alone for too long. Shit. So you want to get them as soon as possible. Unfortunately, they have this annoying tendency to de be defended by these shitheads. Uh, give me a full moon. Why not? I'm not going to sit here and wait for my health to regenerate that far. Always some new thing to take a look out for. Thankfully, those demons do tend to respawn. So you don't need to worry too much about them going away. Resources. While they may be limited, they're never... They're never truly limited. You'll always be able to come and get more resources if you need them. So yeah, I can't hurt him. That much is obvious. So I'm guessing I have to go this way. This looks bad. Look to the right. Th yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, there he was. Half a second of his fucking face. Where'd he go? He's above me. One more time. Lie down and die. That's one. And look! It's another bottomless pit! 
Hooray! Well, it's not really bottomless, but if I fall off, I will die. Man, this guy is trying. Ow. Sorry, I could not let that guy live for too long. He would have got me while I was distracted, and I could not risk that. There we are. For now, I'm safe. It's not safe here? Why not? Looks like this tower has another lift too. I wonder what that leads us to. I wonder if it's another one of those rituals. It's entirely possible that it is. And this might actually be doing me a favour. I might end up going back up, finding another boss fight. I might end up going back up, finding another boss fight, and finding that taking it off this chains might have helped me. Although, judging by the fact that it's actively giving me cutscenes with these dudes, uh, uh, it's actively giving me cutscenes, they put effort into telling me that these chains are dead. Yeah, I'm willing to bet it's not the case that I'm really, I'm really helping myself here. I saw you. I appreciate that these dudes drop just these consumable soul things. It makes my job a hell of a lot, hell of a lot easier. Oh, would you look at that? It's another ritual. Where even am I? In relation to where I started. Sometimes this game has the uh, tendency, to, uh, has the niceness to open up secrets, um, secret back, uh, uh, Basically, it gives you shortcuts back to where you were so that you can run back through to what you've already done from the very start. Sometimes it just leaves you high and dry, though, and you need to be a bit of a... whatchamacallit? Be a bit of a runner. It is disgusting, but it is gorgeous. Whoa, what the hell? Oh. I was a bit worried that was me. Can you blame me? I wouldn't put it past this game to try and pull that shit. So that's interesting. Now that we've uh, sent the heart a, fl a, a flunder? I, I got no idea where we just sent that heart. Wherever it went, it's fucking dead. Uh, let's... Actually, that's a good point. What is the... Let's not do that while that guy's trying to work his way out of there. Let's back up to somewhere a little safer. So if I hit this, now that that's done, has it updated the tips that I have available to me? Yes. There are some tips. You know what you have to do? With the heart fallen, the path is now open. Right, so basically I just need to go back to where I was. Of course, the information you get from them is not going to be as helpful as, let's say, some tips from a certain different kind of owl, owl, from a certain kind of wiki. Because, goddamn, some of the things in these games can get, let's just say, kind of tricky to figure out if you have no idea what you're doing, if you've never played a game like this before. Like figuring out what to give to the crow who wants only shiny things. There are some things that I'd never expect him to want. Or... Huh, am I really back where I started? Yeah, there's the archstone. So I've basically just been led in a gigantic circle. So wherever it was that I didn't go... In the other area on the way down, before I went down to the second one in that really weird looking elevator that this series is known for. Is 
is somewhere that I need to go to actually, like, clear of resources and what have you. Or I can just acknowledge the fact that we've been at this for 50 minutes already and I should probably go and find whatever the hell happened to that heart. Fucking dead on arrival, mate. Jesus. Jumped over me and went straight through my freaking sword. If only there was a amazingly cool animation for something like that. Alright, where do we go now that we're back in the gigantic heart chamber? There's got to be a path down somewhere. Question is where? Very bad idea to maneuver myself towards the edge there. Yes, overhead clearings can stop your sword. Why do you ask? Dead. Very good. I'm assuming that the way down is in here somewhere, but... Where? Okay, yeah, so this way's blocked. That much we know. Where is the way down? I'm assuming that hint video will actually be able to tell us. Apparently, we just keep going straight up. That's not what I was expecting. I was thinking we'd have to go down there and fight ourselves our way through a swarm of those mutated human scorpions, but... Alright. Note that I've actually got a decent amount of souls right now, and I could probably go back and level up if I swallowed one of my consumables, but... We won't do that, we'll save the time. Plus, every time you die or every time you swap areas, all the enemies respawn. So the less of that shit you have to deal with, the better, in my opinion. Let's just get that item before we continue. So it's atmospheric. It looks am Oh my god, what is that? Oh god, it's this thing again. Sorry. Bye. Yeah. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. There are more bloodstains. There may be more on the way up the stairs. But yes, the combat is tense with plenty of reasons to keep yourself alive. Tons of different weapons and approaches to take huge labyrinthine levels that are a lot of fun to explore and have plenty of goodies to reward you with. What's the one piece of the puzzle that hasn't quite been assembled yet? That would be a boss. Question is, does that fog gate lead to one? I'm willing to bet it does. And judging by... <laughs> Judging by those two notes, we are not going to have a good time of this. Let's just go get those items over there. This game rewards kleptomania. Aged spice. Well, at least there's some mana recovery items. Also, yeah, it's a souls game. It's got breakable parts. Tons of them. And the physics are amazing. Alright. I don't know what's next. This is going to be really fun. He lied through his teeth. It's the man eater. It's a gigantic beast man with massive wings and really thin platforms. I can hurt it. He can hurt me. 
These are both givens. Oh, fuck, that hurts. This is where things get really tense, ladies and gentlemen, because these fuckers are huge. What the hell are those? These fuckers are huge. They've got tons of different movesets. You need to be very well acquainted with the game's approach to combat in order to stand a chance. How hard it is depends on the boss that you are facing at the time. Fuck. Because the game does not let up on the difficulty, no matter how far in you go. Some do start out easier, don't get me wrong. Even I managed to beat the Tower Knight after only a couple of tries. I don't want to let him do that. Whatever it is, I do not want to let him do that. That may power him up. How, ex like, poisoning his own brain or his own spinal column would help him out. I could not even begin to guess. Oh my god. Is he splitting? Oh, may my... I should have known there'd be more to this. Really should focus on the one that I've got almost dead. When I'm not getting my shit kicked in by the one that's not. Where'd the second one go? I don't know what they plan on doing to me. But I better not bend over. Ow. Thank god I spent some time optimizing my armor build before I recorded this video because... And by optimizing, I mean just like putting on some better armor because holy shit. Oh, fuck, he was behind me. Thankfully, I have some mercy invincibility. Got one. Oh, I got this one's tail! So you can cut it off! How does that help me? Oh god, no, no! How does that help me? God, if I, if I know, but... That's not the way I want the cat to be facing. All right. Eight fire. Wait, no, I shouldn't be wasting my mana on this. Um, let's show off some special weapon effects. I need to get away from this ledge. So now my weapon is covered in magic. It will do bonus damage. How much damage? I'd love to tell you, but I'm currently being, um... I was just put on my ass by a dude. That's a lot of bonus damage. Like, 20 extra per hit. Let's recast this while I've got the chance. Oh, I can't. I have to wait for it to wear off. Fair enough. Let's 
Where'd he go? Shit, I lost... There he is. That's one. That's two. Almost. One thing I've learned from Demon's games, or Souls games, never fucking risk it. That's a way. That actually went really well. So now that we're done, we get the Archstone with the soul. And the soul can be used to make us new weapons. It can be used to make us new magic spells. Or we can just crush it up and get tons of souls for it. I'm currently sitting at 25k. Did I seriously just go through this entire area that I've never been through before and not die once on camera? What the fuck is wrong with me? This is nowhere near my usual competency level. Did I just get lucky? Did I just stumble into an area where I was either completely correctly equipped or completely just overpowered for it? Because man, am I doing well? I haven't even used half my healing items yet. Either way, I think we need to continue on our little adventure. Although, it's probably a good idea to go back and heal first, because God knows what the hell is at the top of this tower. So you know what? I'm going to go do that. Oh, shit. This means that someone has invaded. I can't go back. I have 25,000 souls on the line. This is going to be fun. Like for example, if I pause, 10,000 souls required. So what I've got right now plus my consumables, that's easily three levels. Oh no. Yeah, I walked right into that one. What? What? I wasn't anywhere near this area. Oh, it's this guy. Right, I think I just accidentally wandered into the area where another player takes on the role of the boss. That's exactly what I did. I actually recognize this area because I've seen it on YouTube before. What'd you do that for, man? I can't see. Never mind, I apparently don't matter. You know, really bad timing for that to happen right when I'm at the point of dealing with that piece of shit. Right. Healing grasses, please. Now, will I be able to... That's not what I meant to do. More healing, uh, more mana, why not? And I have to keep running. 
Maybe if I lead him down far enough, I'll be able to, um... Trick him or something. No, no, it's... This one's the right weapon to use, but I need to get close to him, so I'd be better off using Fire Spray. I just need him to get up. Oh. I just need him to get low enough. So I can go dual hand and do this. I'll take a free hell uh, mana renewal, that's for sure. Oh yeah, you might have noticed my mana meter's actually been going up and down. The um, catalyst I'm using, which is like basically my magic wand, gives me extra MP, but only while I've got it out. So if I get it back out now, I lose that extra MP. Well, I've got that extra MP, but it starts out empty. And then when I swap back, I lose it. So it doesn't matter if I heal it up or not. It's a bit weird that it does that. I think that the I think the silver stuff is basically just meant for someone who plans on being a mage all the time. No! Sometimes it's worth doing the long but annoying way to save yourself potential time, trouble, and death. Also, why they have OSHA. Oh, bugger me dry. No, 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 not you! Bugger me dry! Mr. Um, monster that was ripped directly from like a um, Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. If there is anything that wants to be doing the buggering, it would be me. Uh, back to the spells. I'll do the trick. More spices. No argument. Could always use more of them. Please tell me there's another third one up here, because that would just be obnoxious. No, this is actually the gate to the boss room. At least I assume it is. Yep. Alright. I'm going to be fighting another bloody human for this. Nothing left to do, but... Actually... No reason not to. Let's go. I don't think I've actually been given another player for this. If I remember correctly, what I read was, um... The default old monk only uses those claws. And sometimes a magic spell or two. Which I probably don't want to be ow close to. That was what I was trying to say, yes. Unfortunately for me, not what I wanted to do. I just hit the wrong button. I'll just heal up and take the hit if he gives it to me. Full moon, fuck it. Backstab! Thank you very much. But now I need to run away before those missiles decide to fire at me. Nope, I was not expecting him to do that. Leave myself with some room to dodge roll. Thankfully, the way the combat in this game works is actually, uh... Some of your button inputs are queued. So, if you're getting knocked over when you press the triangle button to stop going from dual-handed to single-handed, for example, you'll do that input when you get up. 
This is a decent use of input queuing, but at the same time, you might accidentally end up doing two attacks when you're only meant to do one, and that can kind of get you killed. Fortunately, this time it did not. I was not expecting that to be as easy as it was. Cool. So I can go and finish the first arch stone now. Or at least continue on. I also got some resources. But is that it? Is that it for the entirety of this arch stone? Well, there's nothing going on down there. And there doesn't appear to be a way out of this room. I appreciate that there are so many chairs for me to destroy, but... Yeah, I guess that's it. I guess we're going back. With 50,000 souls in the bank. God damn. Alright. Nothing left to do but to... Uh, down all my souls. At least all the ones that I want to get rid of at least. 72,000. That is so many level ups, but I want to go see my friend the Spellboy first, because those two souls I picked up on the way might actually have some interesting stuff for them. Let's see, we have Poison Cloud, Soul Ray, ho Homing Soul. Oh, it's that one. Well, that's, uh, that's nice, but I... It, it takes two slots, and I like being able to throw out both fire and magic, so I'm going to leave that one alone for the time being. There are other things you can do around here that I haven't touched on yet, so if you don't like the build that you've got going, you can actually save it and pick it back up later in some form. I don't know how that works. I've been playing this traditional soul style where I kind of stuck with the choices that I made, but that functionality is there. And of course there are multiple save slots if you want to take advantage of some such. But that said though, that's basically going to be it for this video because I could, I mean I could go for another Archstone. Make this a real adventure. I've still got plenty of he um, healing items on me. The question is, what do I want to do? So I can give myself another spell slot, but it's going to take four stat points and that's something that I do not want to do. So. I'd rather just give myself a great, big, humping chunk of change into just my general HP, stamina, and general capabilities with my weapon. So I guess the question is, where do we go next? I could go to the underground temple in a sea of molten lava. I was about to say, I know I've got the flame ring, but does that actually let me, like, walk on lava? Because I would probably need it for that stage. I, was what he'd say. I do have the rings. That doesn't say specifically that it would let me walk on fire, so I don't want to go trying that just yet. Yep, already been through that one. So I guess the only real choice is the ritual path. Oh well, we'll see how we do, eh? And I'm lucky though, I've got so much stuff available to me. Oh great, we have to deal with these things, do we? Yep, we do. And I'm willing to bet my fire won't reach him. Nope, I have to use regular old-fashioned soul arrows for that. Great. The hell? Who, who might you be, old chap? Hello there, we meet again. You look terrible. Cheer up. Life is an adventure. <laughs> it's this guy. No, I actually remember this guy. I have no reason not to stock up. The souls aren't doing as much for me as they used to, so 
If he's got anything that I particularly want, there is no reason not to pick it up at this point. And now I'm fully stocked on healing items. This can't be good. Oh look, this guy is summoning ghosts. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? You can see where Dark Souls gets a lot. Look at all the ghosts running around. These are all like actual people. They're, they're not like um, just like the AI as far as I can tell. Okay, so I can hurt these guys. But there ain't no stagger in them. That's a good start. Yeah, you want some crotch pot? <laughs> Nah, he's holding with his hands, clearly. And look at the lighting and the and the textures and the and the individual details hanging out of each of the bricks. It's it's beyond belief just how good this game looks. Let's just avoid them. Can I get up to Mr. Grim Reaper? Yes, but he will try and shoot the fuck out of me if I do. What did I just step on? Why is there no one there now? I've opened the door, and on the other side of the door is very bright light. And I immediately get the shit shot out of me for trying. More healing. More healing. Thank you. Full moon grass. I appreciate it. Look for lever. Lever? Oh, he must mean that. Hey, this guy dropped an item? Moonshade stone shard. That feels like a tongue twister. I'm guessing there's going to be more ghosts along here, but I want to see what that item was. They were very clearly tempting me with it. Should be just right up these stairs. Although it's looking like um, the ghosts are either gone or... Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> oh man. Walked right into that one. Wasn't even that worth it that much. What we got? That arrow is not a good choice. Yes! Thank you! Thank you very much! Over here? Really? Hey. They actually helped me. It's not safe here. Why? That's why. Oh no. Oh no. I hate these bastards. They're so strong. Please don't come at me so um, aggressively. I beg of you. I am, I am friend. I am friend with sword like half the size of my body. Holy fuck. Even the other one I fought wasn't this strong. Shit, run. <laughs> Where am I? No, no, no. Oh. oh, yeah, okay, I get the point. Um, oh dear. This is gonna be fun to cross while they're shooting those arrows at me. And I'm willing to bet, around one of these fucking corners, there's gonna be an annoying little shit that'll surprise me and just knock me straight off the edge to my death. So what's this? It is a white bow and some white arrows. Interesting. And a storied warrior soul. I'm assuming this leads right back into the temple we just came out of, right? Okay, cool. So I've got a bow and arrow. 
Didn't really need one. I don't have the dexterity for them, but it's nice to have them. You know, I could probably drop this without hurting myself, but... This game can be a little bit of a dick about these sorts of things, so I do not want to take that chance. Oh, hey! Items! Now, this is not trustworthy. See that one that's red? Red often means danger! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this, Would that happen to be the Patches Room? I cannot help but wonder if this is the Patches Room. I know Patches is in this game somewhere, the pit pushing bastard, but... I mean, there is... There is an item down there. But you know what? We're going to leave that alone for now. Where is that gate that opened? It's right here. The stealth is the best option. Do I have a cardboard box? Probably means use the thief ring. Ow! Oh god. Oh no. Oh shit. Run away! <laughs> Oh, you skelly bastards. Mr. Two Primes. Shit. Ow. No, I didn't mean to roll that way. Oh. Right, that's one. These guys are annoying because they play like any PvP player's dream. They never stop rolling. Not only that, but they can knock you off guard just by touching you. Up, up, up and roll. Well, I shouldn't be surprised. That's fine for the Nexus to trap me, but at least you can see how much fucking health I lose. Thankfully, I don't have to deal with that bullshit. That's a way. But you know what? That's enough for tonight. Oh, I didn't realise! You can press L1 and R1 to travel between arch stones. That's actually more convenient than I thought it was going to be. But yes, my souls are there until I make the attempt to recollect them, because I am at zero souls now, but... Ah, fuck it. Let's go try and get them, eh? There's a loading time, Swoya. Don't you love them? Alright, so straight down into the temple. Thankfully, I didn't die too far from... Oh no. Oh fuck me, he's back. Thankfully, I have ways around this problem. It's called a, a stick of magic. Aim, fire. Wrong firing target. Find the correct target. Did you see how low my health got? That was incredibly close. <laughs> oh dear. And the worst part is... Now, I get to go fight the Skellingtons. Where the fuck are my souls? I appreciate the free healing items. I will need them. Seriously, where the fuck are my souls? Not them. Mine are a blue color. 
That helps me. Fuck, I hate these things. Like, look, I can walk onto them, but... I can legitimately lock onto them. I just... They're so far away that my, um... My firebolts do no damage. At least I can do that. Get my shield back out and move on. Got my souls back. 15,000 is never a pleasant number to lose. Oh, I see you. I see you just around that corner. Oh, he's one of the big- Two of the big fucking dudes. That's never a good sign. I say we- I say we don't do that. That's a waste of mana. I say we, uh... I say we run past them. This works. Foggate. In. They can still follow me. I am willing to bet they're going to try. If I get far enough away though, they won't follow me any further. This does not look safe. What just- WHAT THE FUCK IS THAT?! Oh, and they're still coming too. Yeah, we're gonna give you this many healing grasses. Cause you will fucking need them. In this land, where the fucking mages have Death Star laser beams. See what I mean about them running away? Or at least moving away? I was the one doing the running. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so the ghosts have laser beams now. Is there any way for me to realistically tell them apart? Uh, other than they take a lot more damage than your regular grunt ghost? No. Although I'm curious. If I remember correctly, ghosts are weak to magic. We'll see if I remember correctly, if I make it to the bottom of this pit without getting my head lasered off by an angry ghost. Uh... Well, I'm not going to say it didn't help. Not as much as I would have hoped. Tagger. You really think I didn't see you there? You didn't even try to attack me. That's the best part. He's just like, I'm just going to sit here. Wait for him to really make an ass of himself by missing me. I'm gonna wait for my enchant to run out. Which shouldn't be it much. Nah, screw it, I'll just go for it. Literally ran out as I walked around the corner. Thanks, gang. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> that was weird. Oh, I killed him! Sweet! Because all of his ghost friends died. Beware of demons ahead. Crescent moon. Crescent moon. What the? Ah. What? What? Let's, um, leave this room just for a moment. Little shits. Fucking walk. Screw it, let's go.
Best thing to do with those things, never stop moving. And try and have a, a wall to your back. The ghosts aren't here. The ghosts are here. Trying to get my... Ow! Trying to get my shield out, and I keep... The camera... Can choose not to agree with me from time to time. What? Where? Right there. Right there. Oh, I'm so gonna die. Where the fuck am I? Well, the Grim Reaper's been alerted to my presence. The question is, how close am I going to be able to get? Probably about this close. I really should not have played that game of check-in. deep does this go? I'm thinking boss area. Are you thinking boss area? I mean, there would have been a fog gate, but... Oh. Giant sea slugs. Oh shit, oh shit! No, I'm okay. I'm guessing these slugs aren't going to be good for anything. Oh! Can't say they don't give you different things to worry about in every level, that's for sure. My sign is the foot. The fuck is that supposed to mean? Well, if this ain't a boss, I don't know what is. Really? No, this is actually a boss. Three, two, there it is. So the man eater was a challenge. The old, uh, the old monk, I think his name was, was also a challenge. This guy looks like a fucking beast. He's also on fire. Spiritual fire. It's very spiritual. I'm going to die. Oh my god. The health. The health on oh, this mad lad. He can create an explosion. He can do several kinds of physical attacks. Swap my short my sword, my shield. Back up, back up. How do I 
always, I'm always just a little bit too far away. Oh no. That looked like a ranged attack. That, that also looked like a ranged attack. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of my health in one shot. Oh dear. Let's heal. I love the little detail of the rocks floating in the air to let you know how far the explosion's gonna go. That is a great little detail. Shit. Am I slow rolling? I feel like I'm slow rolling. I was about to say. Might as well fire some magic off at him while I don't want to risk getting near him. Because look at his health bar. The thing about bosses in Demon Souls, and like a lot of the Souls games, is that they have this tendency to pull out new move sets when the fight's at like the halfway point. Oh fuck! Heal while I've got the chance. I love how my little just nudge does like 13 damage. Even my nudges are getting stronger. Oh! Thank you, Mercy Invincibility. Wow! 37,000 souls down the drain. And now I get to find my way through all of those Grim Reapers again. Yeah. Yeah, now's the time to stop. Nevertheless, I made some good progress today, which is good because I really don't have time to be playing more Demon Souls. I... I do love this game, though. Because it is legitimately really damn good. Doesn't have a lot of the bullshit that Souls tends to have from time to time. Like the camera not locking onto the opponent properly, or... Uh, just just a bunch of weird things that just get in the way. This game has none of those little frustrations, except for the fact you have to go farming for stuff all the time. The remaster is gorgeous. The look of it, the textures, the sounds, the redone animations that are still perfectly on time, making the combat feel just that much more satisfying. Everything being done up in this absolutely wonderful looking remake is just... It's another hit from Bluepoint. It's another absolute win. And that's genuinely impressive. And I... Uh, so far, I've got almost no complaints. The only things I really have to complain about are... I've got no one to play online with. Because for some reason, that just doesn't seem to want to work on the Sydney servers. And that I have to go farm from time to time. That's it. This is a triumph. One of the best launch window games has ever been released for any console ever. And the funny thing is, they've done it twice. I... Just to make sure that I don't forget my place when I eventually have time to come back to Demon Souls. Let's get my body back to where I was, and let's go back to where I was. Which was the Ritual Path. I got halfway through the old one, and the only reason I died was because I took two hits too soon after each other, so... I should be alright to take it on again later, but for now, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure into demons, showing you exactly what playing this game is like. This has been Blue Maxima. Let's make a good- let's take a good photo, eh? Because this game has an in-depth photo mode. Actually, you know what? For people who like me going through all of the usual stuff that you usually see in these videos, here's all the options. There's a fair amount of them. It's all a bit... It's all... Basic stuff you would hope to have in any Souls game. Nothing particularly missing. So for now... We can take... A photo. I just set myself right.
we can take a photo of my woman with a dude's voice. Because sure, why not? Let's see if I can get something good going on. So, don't have to show me. Although it's it creates like, yeah, that halo lighting effect. Show all the weapons. You can even change the pose. Rah! <laughs> Field of view zoom. Didn't even see him up there. You know, let's get let's get them both in the picture together, shall we? Depth of field focus. So we can, we can even change the depth of field. Vignettes. Filters. So the classic filter just makes everything a little bit slightly different. You can even change all the colors in the balloon. This is a ridiculously good, um, this is a ridiculously good photo mode. But yeah, that'll do. How do I actually take the picture now that I'm here though? Aww. How do I actually take the picture? Do I have to like actually hit the screenshot button? So yeah, hide the GOI then just hit the... Yeah, I guess that's what you have to do, isn't it? We'll make a PNG. There we go! I guess I'll be making that the thumbnail. Back up to the thing before I get my ass kicked in by one of those gigantic bolts. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.